see you all. I'm happy to be here. And y'all, y'all sport this salt and pepper, like the mom. I mean, well, the mom. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know. He's not far behind. I'm yeah, catching up fast. I love, it. I love it. God is great. And greatly to be praised. Okay, so, so we know, we, we have a lot to cover tonight. Yes. Because right. we all know how the enemy fights marriages. Right. And I know you guys, you guys been pastoring how long now? 35 30, years. 35 and pastors, years. Greater years. Allen AME Cathedral Church for 35 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how long have you been married? 36, 36 years. years. Wow. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. That's you started that quick. Did you know he was going to be a pastor he when you said I did? He probably he would never pastor. <gasps> oh, yes. <laughs> I've heard that before. I've heard that so before. So he started Never. out with broken promises, huh? <laughs> but there is such a thing as a call. That's right. And okay. You have Explain to do what that. God, what God calls you to do. That's right. right. And um, and she said, uh, you're happiest when you're in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And but that we... didn't mean he could pass. <laughs> <laughs> he could preach, though. He could preach. He could preach. Yeah. Preaching would have been fine, but <laughs> passing is another whole thing. Right. Yeah, that's a lot. So there's I mean, a difference, right? And pastoring between pastoring in New and York. Preaching, right? yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. That was yeah. yeah, that's another one. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's pastoring yeah. and in New I'm York. I'm an yeah. adaptable person. You know, oh. I just I just believe in compromise and. <laughs> Coming out tonight. This is gonna be great. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be the real deal here. Okay? No script. No and script. I love no script. No script. This is gonna, right. gonna right. work. No I script. love this though because it's people true. need it. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're They're gonna say, get it. Okay. Get it. Well, I got a question for them. Okay. They've been married 36 years. So, 30. what's the top three things that have kept your marriage together? You feel the top three? I know it's probably several, but the top three. For me, it, it starts with the one thing we know and that is that God put us together mm -hmm. and, uh, and and I know it because um, as we were together in Boston uh, we developed a friendship and that friendship grew and grew until we were in a love relationship and that love relationship was where we pretty much clearly identified who we were to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't play any games with each other. Right. As a matter of fact, um, at that time, I was pretty free in the spirit. <laughs> and, uh, in the spirit. In the spirit. <laughs> and, uh, and she, she oh knew God, the people so who great. I was expressing my freedom okay. to. <laughs> okay. and, uh, but they kept calling her to ask her About how they could get, get to, to me. me. And uh, so after a while, that was fun. she was the only one left. <laughs> left. <laughs> and, uh, well, I wonder how that happened. <laughs> so, so that's the way we came together. And uh, so we became great, great friends. And I think wow. that's one point. And I, I think the other one is, um, I mean, God blessed me with mm -hmm. a very, very, very intelligent woman. Right. Yes. Right. And, uh, She's right. right. <laughs> then, that's one point. Beautiful and intelligent. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it, I think it, it makes a difference when you can be on the same plane intellectually. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also helps that it helps you to develop a kind of emotion mm -hmm. that you understand each other, you think right. together, you flow together. Mm -hmm. It is not ever going to be where you don't have your disagreements. Exactly. Right. But if you have a disagreement you know and your wife writes you a letter, you know that we don't do this anymore. <laughs> we will never do it that way. She writes you a letter. A letter. Very good. Yes, Very good. yes, yes. Okay. yes. So, no, and I want to hear about the letter. Right, but one. Oh, 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 oh that's all it took. That's all it took. That's, that's all it took. That's all it That one. Yeah, you write it well. There's no number two letter, huh? Just one letter. Just one letter. That's awesome. Oh, I, awesome. okay. I think that um, I think being friends is really important, but I also think being adaptable mm -hmm. uh, because n things just don't go like you want them to go. Mm -hmm. That's true. Life happens. But uh, someone said to me as we were getting married that love comes and goes, but the covenant is forever. Covenant is forever. Mm -hmm. And so that. that has kind of been with me mm -hmm. um, for most of these 36 mm -hmm. years that you have to have a commitment not only to the person, but you have to have a commitment to the relationship. relationship. Mm. And when you have a commitment to the relationship, 
then you're willing to make the sacrifices, you're willing to make the adjustments, and you're willing to overlook some things and forget some things, even if they never asked for forgiveness. You know, you, you oh, know, you just, good. because that's you're good. committed to making it work. That's mm -hmm. good, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, with so many divorces going on, you've, you've given us some secrets of how you guys have stayed together, but what do you think is missing nowadays yes. when so many marriages are collapsing? They're not lasting. Mm. Um, what would be maybe the top three things you feel like because I'm sure you do a lot of counseling in yeah. you guys' position, yeah. Yeah. and you've seen, you've seen a lot. So mm -hmm. what do you think some of the main problems are? You first well, I, I, I think there is that lack of commitment. That mm -hmm. commitment, the vow that you made at your mm -hmm. marriage ceremony, for which you paid much money to become a part of, <laughs> of this relationship. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A whole lot of money. And, Get and a, real lot of a whole lot yeah. of commitment. And, and I think that the bottom line is commitment. If mm -hmm. I am committed mm -hmm. to this marriage, to this relationship, mm -hmm. to what this relationship produces, mm -hmm. whether it is children or mm -hmm. whether it is where we are professionally, we have a responsibility, responsibility. in that commitment to c be with each other Mm -hmm. and to come to common ground on most of those things that mm -hmm. other folk mm -hmm. would walk away from. Right. You have to believe yeah. in each other yeah. and you have to have a, a conviction that says, conviction. I know, yeah, I don't necessarily like this particular mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. but there are more things that I like that mm -hmm. I don't like. And, right. That, right. That, and that's commitment. That's good. Right. That's good. That's good. I've heard Bishop Jakes talks about the 80-20. 80-20, yeah. 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 Hey. It, could be it, it could, could be 60 It could be 60 <laughs> <laughs> I know that's true. That's true. So, what about you? What well, you, you know, say? yeah, I think the whole notion of covenant mm -hmm. uh, escapes our um, uh, many marriages today. I think that, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's kind of a me thing. I'm not happy. Oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. Uh, I, yeah, I, you know, I think that, you know, we're kind of in a generation where uh, people are more into so being sure that I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And many times you have to be, be willing to forgive and to give Absolutely. to um, say, well, you know, it's not about me right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about the marriage. Mm -hmm. It's about the relationship. Mm -hmm. It's about the covenant that we made. Putting that first. Trying to put it first. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know one Good. thing that's new and we didn't see a lot of earlier was marriage counseling. You know, a lot of a lot of people are going through marriage counseling now, which obviously is is good, mm -hmm. but is it really making that much of a difference? To, as you guys are pastors, I'm sure you guys Sometimes counsel you a wonder. lot. You, you know, really have yeah. to wonder. You guys do marriage counseling at your at your church? Well, oh. yeah, at our church we yeah. send them through a whole series. Series, yeah. And um, you know they go through it, and some make it, and some don't. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. It's no guarantee, right? Mm -hmm. No guarantee. Well, well, you guys said something. Um, you said you got married, and then the next year you started pastoring. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. You guys deserve another applause. <laughs> so, I'm sure there are a lot of young pastors out there. Mm -hmm. um, Pastoring nowadays is a lot of co-pastoring, yes, right, with, yes. the, with the husband and wife. Right. right. Um, how do you handle that balance? What challenges <laughs> come from that, yeah, and how do you handle that? Because we, I mean, I remember when Alvin and I started traveling. A lot of people say, "Oh, y'all marriage was good. It ain't gonna be good no more." <laughs> y'all be together all, all the time. Y'all be there all, all the time. time. Yeah. Yeah. And and you do have to set up different things in order to make it run smoothly. Right. So, what challenges mm -hmm. can you tell? some of the pastors <laughs> that are, that are uh, <laughs> going through it right now that they can expect or maybe they can prevent. Prevent? Yeah. Well, well, I think you get rid of, the first thing you have to do is get rid of any biases that you have. And okay. you know, for, from a historical perspective, mm -hmm. there was always this notion that women did not belong in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. If God calls you and God calls your wife mm -hmm. to be pastors Pastor. together. Priority. You have to be pastors together. Mm -hmm. And that means you understand that in the direction that we believe God wants to take us mm -hmm. in this covenant relationship, both the marriage and now uh, the covenant relationship in terms of our ministry, mm -hmm. 
we have to be together. together. And it does not mean that we're going to agree on everything. Right. But what it does mean is that we have enough respect for one another That's that we are respect. not going to do anything mm -hmm. to cause them, the other per party, to believe that you think they are less than you mm -hmm. or that they don't really belong in ministry. You have to feel like we're in this together. We make decisions together. Mm -hmm. We decide the direction Absolutely. of the ministry together. Absolutely. And wow. we ask God to con keep on blessing yes. us yeah. so that we might have new visions mm -hmm. to continue to do and new and greater things uh, as a couple. Right. And, and it works. That is that's awesome. Awesome. What about you, Dr. Well, I, I think the other thing, too, is that no two marriages, no two co-pastorates will be alike. You have to kind of know the flow of your marriage, know the flow of the relationship, and you have to kind of establish that flow so that, um, you know, you're not looking at what mm -hmm. this couple is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we are pretty much, um, we're easygoing. And <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, and, then, and, and, and we have kind of worked it out. You know, right. we've worked it out. Uh, I, I take care of the house in addition mm -hmm. to all that I do at the church. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of the way we flow. And yeah. so it's, it's kind of understood that he does the the larger scale things, and I do the day-to-day -day things, and that's oh, fine okay. with me. That's right. And I do the so, cooking. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this thought would get better. Very good. Very good. That's a good thing. So he can get cooked. He can get cooked. He can get cooked. He's a he's a good cook. Okay. He's a okay. good cook. Okay. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's you say yeah. Well, you say it like that. No, he's a good cook. He's a good cook. My children come home every week to eat oh, it. Oh, that's, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. No, that's a good thing. But no, she's good. a good cook. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, she she just watches if I, I just start. Do it sparingly. She just gets her. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> awesome. So you saying know the flow, right? Because because you have to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it can't okay. be what someone else Adios. is doing. You can't try to fit into any kind of stereotypical molds. You just have to flow. That's good. And don't, and don't really get caught up in roles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, that's one good. thing that has helped us, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught up in roles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Because then when you're caught up in roles, then, then when something's not you're not flexible. Mm -hmm. You're not flexible, and you and and you can't listen to people mm -hmm. to tell you how you need to make your marriage work. Oh, yeah. that's, you that's have to figure key. out for yourself oh, how, yeah. how this oh, thing yeah. is going to work. Yeah. Everybody got an opinion. Yeah. 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 So one of the questions seems to be. And, and one ask, thing, be, as being a preaching couple, mm -hmm. you can't get caught up in competition. Oh, say that again. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? You cannot be caught up in it because right. once you begin to compete, it's a, problem. it's a problem. And you have to deal with a whole lot of issues you don't because the congregants pick up on that. Mm -hmm. And they begin to divide and conquer. Really? And if you're not careful, you find ministries falling apart mm -hmm. simply really? because you had it right. together but you allowed wow. that competition thing to get in the way. She's a far better preacher than I am. I truly believe that in my spirit. Really? And, uh, and I, I acknowledge it because I watch her as she labors and put those sermons yeah. together and yeah. read the books and all of that. Awesome. I do the same thing. It just doesn't come out the same way. Well, yeah. <laughs> but but it's, all, it's all to the glory. It's all to the yeah. glory of God. Right? Yeah. It's all to the glory. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess my question is because you do hear about that, and that's something I really can't understand. Where does... Competing come from when you when you when you both won. Where on does that team. come from? Yeah. You know, I I heard a friend say um, that when you are one, mm -hmm. when he hits a home run, I hit a home run, mm -hmm. and when I hit a home run, he hits a home exactly. run. Exactly. And so you have to kind of see it like that, right. and understand that if you really are one, to be competing against yourself is rather dysfunctional. Especially when you're competing yeah. against yourself. Very right. That's a good point. Right. Good point. And, and so you don't buy into it. And when that demon would rise, you just rebuke it. Put it back where it came from. Right. That's ridiculous. Ooh, I could talk to y'all all day long. Um, 
Let me ask you this. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll start with you. Being a wife, a mother, mm -hmm. and I know you get asked this question all a lot. The time, yeah. A pastor, all the things that you do, mm -hmm. speaker, um, how do you balance it all? Mm -hmm. How do you mm -hmm. prioritize? How do you make it work? You know, I just kind of took one day at a time and didn't think about it because if I thought about it, I probably would have fainted or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when, when, when I went back to seminary, I had four children. And then I was at the Allen Christian School. I was uh, preaching and having a women's ministry and doing whatever. Wow. But it was, you know, I just did one day at a time and, and tried to prioritize appropriately, mm -hmm. uh, understanding that the kids couldn't suffer but so much, and so you having to make time for them. Uh, the one thing that I do appreciate about Floyd is that he helps. At, you know, he's always been an involved dad. Awesome. And um, <clears throat> he has not been the kind of guy that would express it anyway if he felt it that he would you know i never had to feel like i was i had to feel guilty for neglecting him mm. you know one, you know if we were in a a crisis right, time right. he didn't have a lot of demands and i think he can say the same that thing about me right. that you know we just kind of look at the bigger picture right. and you know if you think about what's going on and understand the larger scope of your lives mm -hmm. and the demands on your lives, mm -hmm. then you can't fall into that little pettiness, well, he's ignoring me or, mm -hmm. or uh, he's not spending time with me. Mm -hmm. Be because, you know, it will come. It will right. come. But you have to move through your seasons mm -hmm. uh, with some level of maturity and understanding that, you know, this too can pass, it will pass, mm -hmm. and then you can reshape your lives. And, and you deal with your priorities. I mean, even, even while I was in Congress, she'll tell you, I flew home every night from Washington to New York while she was working on her doctorate. I was mm -hmm. there doing homework with the kids, and I made it my business. Because I love I just, Hold I, on. We have to clap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because the marriage, the home was more important, and the church, was more important to me than my political position. Mm -hmm. And so even though it was out of town, mm -hmm. it was close enough that I could come back, drop the kids off at school in the morning, and go straight and get on the plane and stay in Congress all day. And then if that vote was over by 8 o'clock, I'm on the last plane out and back home. Mm -hmm. Even if the kids are in the bed when I get home, they know Daddy came home mm -hmm. and Daddy's right. going right. to drop good. them off. You can talk to the place on and on because they got that, so much that's wisdom. That's amazing. So okay. Wisdom. Um, wow. Um, I just want to ask, uh, ahead, Doctor, ask one question here, and I know it's uh, getting late. But the men, there's a lot of men who are seen to be walking away from their homes and walking away from their marriages nowadays. What do you have to say to these men? I, I think I think these men need to get a grip on themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I think there is an mm -hmm. element out what? there. Um, that have come to the conclusion that marriage really does not have to last this long. Mm -hmm. I don't have to stay with this woman forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's that pull on the part of many women, especially if they think you are successful, mm -hmm. that they are going to try to pull you out of that relationship. Wow. My thesis has always been, my father demonstrated well to me mm -hmm. the fact that if you're committed to the marriage, Mm -hmm. That's what you commit your life to, and that's what you give all that you have to to make it work. Mm -hmm. And you don't just walk away walk because away. something happened or something was said mm -hmm. because no marriage, marriage is going is to perfect. be perfect. No, it's it's not going to be perfect. Right. I, think that's good. I think they're asking for Kevin yeah. um, Would you do me a favor before you guys go? Thank, first of all, thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I just it's a love pleasure you talking guys. to you guys. Honor we you love you so much. <laughs> But I, I just want you to pray for the women, and okay. maybe women in ministry and married women. Okay. And and if you would just pray for the men, like Alan said, that is such a huge mm -hmm. problem right now. Right. Right. Men right. are leaving their relationships right. and uncovering right. the home, right. and we know it's a trick of the enemy. Yes. And so if you would just pray for them, that would be great. All right. Okay, great. Okay. Who's first? <clears throat> 
Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we come on this day yes. celebrating love and celebrating relationships. Yes. God, we come believing that through you all things are possible. Yes, Lord. That relationships can survive yes. and that the women that you have called to those relationships can become the women, the wives that you created them to be. Amen. God, we pray for every woman who loves you. We pray for every woman who knows how to call your name. Yes, Father. And we pray, O oh Lord God, that as she calls your name, that you would touch, that you would heal, and that you would restore. In the name of Jesus. So many of us have been through difficulties in life. So many sisters have known abuse, have known detachment, yes. been deserted, yes. been abandoned, been rejected. But God, we are so glad tonight yes, that we know Lord. Thank you, Jesus. that you are in Jehovah Rapha, yes, Lord. the God who heals. Hallelujah. You are Jehovah Jireh, the provider, yes, Lord. and you take care of us. So God, tonight we thank you for loving us. Yes, Lord. We thank you for opening doors for us. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for giving us what we need to live life abundantly. We pray for every marriage represented in the studio and in TV land. Yes, Lord. We pray, O oh Lord God, that you would show women how to appropriately minister to her husband, yes. to their children, appropriately love them, yes. and in the midst of all of that, maintain herself. Amen. So, God, we ask now that you would bless us and keep us. Help us, O oh Lord God, to rise above every pitfall and every trap that the enemy has set. Let us remember that society cannot define us, but we are who you say we are. Yes, Lord. Yes. And we pray this prayer in victory. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thee, O oh God, we give praise and thanks, we honor and we bless your name because in your wisdom you created man and woman. Yes, Lord. You created us that we might be one together, yes. that we might know love and that we might know joy and have happiness. God, we pray for the brothers, yes. the brothers, yes, Lord. that they do not allow themselves to get caught up in the moods and the modes as they change in the society of which we are a part. Deal with the reality of who they are and who God has consecrated them to be. Mm -hmm. Give them gifts so that out of the gifts that you give them, yes, they will have the ability to do things that measure to a, a level of success that is consistent with what your desire is for their life. Please, so that they do not become insecure Please, and find themselves walking away because they don't think they measure up or find themselves in a position where they have been blessed to produce children and yet do not see a sense of responsibility for taking care of them. My God. God, we pray that you will give strength yes. to marriages. Yes. Help us to once again yes. have an appreciation to the degree that even as some things began to fall apart and break, we take the same spirit of our parents and foreparents and we say we're going to stay together. And we will stay together for the good of the family. We will stay together because this is a covenant relationship. Mm -hmm. And we will stay together because if we don't do what you have asked us to do and told us to do, we realize that we lose a part of ourselves. So God, help us to be whole men, giving of ourselves totally unto you so that you might be able to focus and focusing on the family to help us to know that we ought to stay together. Amen. 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 Praise God. Please welcome Kevin.